greetings and thank you once again for joining me here at St Matthew's where today we celebrate um, the Feast of Palm or Passion Sunday. Ever since the days of the early church, the faithful have reenacted the solemn entry of Christ into Jerusalem on the Sunday before Easter. So today we begin outside. I begin outside as would be a normal practice. And it's usually here that we would bless and distribute palm crosses. I did find some that were tucked away. You may have one at home uh, from last year and the previous year. So please feel free to pause the video and go and get that one. Alternatively, I will include a link below where you may wish to make your own cross out of paper as I'm not sure that we all have palm trees are easily accessible. We also want to pay tribute today to the special of our parish uh, who went to be with our Lord early last Tuesday morning. Um, so today Sue Brennan was very much on my mind and my heart along with her family. She did last week Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Lord be with you. And also with you. This morning begins <coughs> This morning begins the great week of the Christian year. During Lent, we have been preparing our works of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of the Lord's death and resurrection. With Christians throughout the world, we come together this week to call to mind and to express in word and action the centre of the Easter mystery, our Lord's Passover from death to life. Christ entered in triumph into the holy city to complete his work as Messiah, to suffer, to die and to rise to new life. Today we commit ourselves to all in his risen life. So if you have a palm, a cross or a palm cross with you, please raise it now. Sovereign God, we thank you for these crosses of palm. By your blessing, may they be for us signs of victory of your son. May we who carry them in his name ever hail him as our Messiah and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. reached Bethpage, the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied, and a colt with them. Go and tie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to, to you, Christ our Lord. Lord. So I now say the processional prayer, so let us pray together. Merciful God, as we enter this Holy Week and gather in our homes or at your house of prayer, turn our hearts again to Jerusalem, to the life, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that 
united with Christ and all the faithful, we may one day enter in triumph the city not made with hands, the new Jerusalem, eternal in the heavens, where with you and the Holy Spirit, Christ lives in glory forever. Amen. Amen. Let us praise Jesus, our Messiah, as did the crowds who welcomed him to Jerusalem. Let us proceed in peace. In the name, name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. 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 Let us pray. God of all, you gave your only begotten Son to take the form of a servant and to be obedient even to death on a cross. Give us the same mind that was in Christ Jesus, that sharing in his humility, we may come to be with him in his glory, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now have our first reading from Isaiah. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The servant of the Lord said, The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicated me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversities? Adversaries, let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our psalm today is Psalm 31, verses 9 to 18. I'll say the first half of the verse. And you respond with the second half. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye wastes away for grief, my throat also, and my inward parts. For my life wears out in sorrow, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me in my affliction, and my bones are consumed. I am become the scorn of all my enemies. And And my my neighbours wag their heads in derision. I am a thing of horror to my friends. And and those that see me in the street shrink from me. I am forgotten like one dead and out of mind. I have become like a broken vessel. For I hear the whispering of many. And fear in on every side. While they plot together against me. And scheme to take away my life. But in you, Lord, have I put my trust. I have said, you are my God. All my days are in your hands. O deliver me from the power of my enemies and from my persecutors. Make your face to shine upon your servant. And save me for your mercy's sake. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ, 
who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Christ Jesus is Lord, to the glory of the Father. This is the word of the God. Hear the word of the Lord. Lord. Uh, hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today a journey begins. Churches around the world will have Palm Sunday processions similar to the processions we just made earlier. But this short journey is much more symbolic of a profound journey Many journeys, in fact. We may have reflected on this journey of Holy Week many times in our lives, but I never fail to find it different every year, perhaps because I come to it differently each year. But this year will be the most different of any other, given we're unable to gather and undertake the journey of Holy Week together. I will put a link below for some prayers, readings and devotions that you may wish to undertake during this week. Ultimately, each year, this story of good news reaches me wherever I am in time and space to touch me in new and inspiring ways if I'm open to receive it. For two billion Christians around the world, this week will be like no other. It's the week which holds the deepest mysteries of our faith for us. It's a week of historical drama following the last days of Jesus' earthly life. But it is a week that is not bound to past history, but stands beyond history too, filled with a truth that is always present to us. On this day, we celebrate as Palm Sunday. Jesus enters Jerusalem humble and riding on a donkey. This is not a natural observation. It's a powerfully symbolic fulfillment of a prophecy that was well known to the Jewish people. The prophecy that a new king of Israel, a Messiah, would arrive like this was widely known. And Matthew's Gospel highlights more than any other that Jesus is the fulfillment of Old Testament hopes. Fourteen times Matthew introduces a quotation from the Old Testament with a similar formula about fulfilling what was spoken through the prophet. Today's reference is to Zechariah in the twelfth, and it's the twelfth of those fourteen references. Interestingly, the quote from Zechariah is a misquote. Zechariah says, Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. But in Matthew's Gospel, the words triumphant and victorious are left out. Was Matthew forgetful? Or is this perhaps a little message to tell us that this is not necessarily the king we are expecting? Still, regardless of the clues Matthew is giving the reader of his Gospel, The crowds that day in Jerusalem were filled with expectant enthusiasm. We hear them cry out with words from Psalm 118, Hosanna, which means save us, and blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. What did the disciples and the crowds expect that day? From what I've said, we know that the crowds would have put a lot of symbolic store in what was happening. Much is often made of the crowd's messianic expectation that they were expecting a saviour who would overthrow the Romans and restore Jewish political rule. No doubt there was expectation in the air. But as with any crowd of people, there would have been a range of expectations. 
Maybe some were filled with hope for a Messiah, but perhaps others were just looking on in curiosity. Some were maybe just out for a good time, going along for the ride and seizing the chance to go a bit wild. Maybe some were sceptical, some incredulous that this country bloke was being cheered. Maybe some were a bit bemused and confused. Certainly, I think some were antagonistic. So in a similar way, we all come to this Holy Week from a range of personal experiences. We may have found this Lenten season to be a good time to re reconnect with God. We may be feeling grounded and in touch with God. Or we may be feeling fearful or distracted by the current situation where we are all learning to live our days differently. Perhaps we are feeling we've done all this before and what can I possibly learn? We might be feeling a bit cold or lukewarm in our faith. We might be fired up and ready to be inspired into action. I know some of us are in this community especially very sad with the loss uh, of Sue Brennan this week. However, we come to this day and this Holy Week from whatever viewpoint we stand in the crowd as Jesus goes by. This Jesus is for you, for each one of us. This journey of Holy Week is not a journey to watch from the outside. This is your journey. And as we walk with Jesus, we carry all our hopes and expectations for our lives, all our burdens and struggles, all our joys and pleasures, and we hold them in the light of Christ. <coughs> Walking this path through Jerusalem to the cross and to the empty tomb is the touchstone of our faith. It is the heart of the gospel, the good spell, the good story by which all our life stories are read and find their place. For us today, all we need is the willingness to be in the crowd with an open mind and an open heart. To have a voice to cry, Hosanna, save us. For blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord be with you.
passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, So, could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass until I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priests and the elders of of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man, arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place, so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it up in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is that they testify against you. But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. But Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophecy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, 
You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And he denied it with an oath. I do not know that man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept, wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Jesus, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I, I have sinned by, by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is it to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, Judas departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah, and they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor. And the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time they had a no notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about you. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor said to them, Which of, you, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let, Let him, him be, be crucified. crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather, that, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered him, His, his blood, blood be on us and on, on our, our children. children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some crowns into thorn, in, some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand, and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, Hail King, King of the Jews. Jews! They spat on him, and took the reed and struck him on the head. 
After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene called Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they took him wine to drink, mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now. If he wants to... For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma shabachthana. That is, my God, my God, Why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This This man is calling for Elijah. At once one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to him. Then Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many of the bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him, who were keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, They were terrified and said, Truly this man was God's son. This is the passion of the Lord. So now let us pray for the world and for the church. Let us pray for the world and for the church. For Christian communities everywhere, following the way of the cross this week, that the passion of Christ may sustain our faith and enliven our witness to the world. We pray to you, living God. Lord, hear our prayer. For the pastors, teachers, evangelists and prophets of the church, that the wisdom of Christ may keep them grounded in the gospel. We pray to you, living God. Lord, hear our prayer. For all candidates for baptism and for the church preparing to welcome them, that the faith of Christ may gather us together at the foot of the cross. We pray to you, living God. Lord, hear our prayer. For the nations of the world and the peace of Jerusalem, that the kingdom of Christ may come with true peace, and the forgiveness of our enemies, we pray to you, living God. Lord, hear our prayer. For the endangered earth, where human carelessness and the waste threaten the environment, that the Spirit of Christ may teach us how to care for the earth, and receive our delight in creation, sorry, and revive our delight in creation. We pray to you, living God. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the hungry, the homeless and the outcast of the world, that the love of Christ may teach us hospitality and hope and care for the least of our sisters and brothers. We pray to you, living God. Lord, hear our prayer. For people whose lives are limited by sickness, grief or fear, that the compassion of Christ may come to them with comfort and courage. We pray to you, living God. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who bear the weight of others' troubles, that the easy yoke of Christ may lighten their burdens and strengthen them for service. We pray to you, living God. Lord, hear our prayer. For people offering their lives in loving service, and the blessing of Christ that the blessing of Christ may come to them and their gifts be revived, received and remembered with joy. We pray to you, living God. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who deny their faith or betray their friends, for all who repent of their sins, for ourselves as we turn and ask for mercy, that the forgiveness of Christ may come with healing and love. We pray to you, living God. Lord, hear our prayer for people preparing to die, that the light of Christ may shine on them, both now and in the day of resurrection. We pray to you, living God. Lord, hear our prayer. Living God, you listen when your people cry out to you, hearing our prayers and forgiving our sins. Send us the grace we need to be faithful followers of our crucified and risen Lord. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Christ has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Lord, 
hear summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go, where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. Yours is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All glory and honor be yours now and always. Mighty Creator, ever-living God, we give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. He offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. The tree of defeat became the tree of victory. Where life was lost, there life has been restored. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, whom you sent to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. Hear us, merciful Lord, through Christ accept our sacrifice of praise and by the power of your word and Holy Spirit sanctify this bread and this wine, that we who share in this holy sacrament may be partakers of Christ's body and blood, who when his hour had come on the night before he went up to the cross to make full atonement for the sins of the whole world, offering once for all his sacrifice of himself, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the saviour of the world. Therefore, in obedience to his command, we commemorate and celebrate his saving passion and death, his mighty resurrection and ascension into heaven, and we eagerly await his coming in glory. We thank you that by your grace alone you have accepted us in Christ, and here we offer you a spiritual sacrifice, holy and acceptable in your sight. And together, renew us by your Holy Spirit, Unite us in the body of your Son and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, 
We worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. If we have died with him, we shall live with him. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, and let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him with our hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Traditionally, I have not given a final blessing or dismissal on this day. As we have now entered Holy Week, we are on the liturgical journey to the cross and beyond. So let us sing our final hymn, a solemn deviation from our regular upbeat hymn, but fitting for today, and I will see you back here on Good Friday from St Linus. <laughs> 